Uh, welcome today to our session on planning your professional development. This session will be a clear guide to, as you're starting VISTA, what resources are available that can help you navigate your year. Um, we'll look at how you can create a plan to make sure that you're getting the most out of your VISTA service and really using this as a year for professional development. VISTA offers a lot of resources, um, both on the campus and through webinars like this, and so we'll be guiding um, through some of those resources available, highlighting some of them that are particularly important during your VISTA year, um, and direct you to where you can go when you have questions. Today is Andy King, he's a training specialist with AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, I am here as well, I am uh, with Camping Consultation, and I am joined by uh, teammate Suzanne Knizner, who will be handling our technical assistance today, and Shannon Gary, who you will see popping up through the chat, um, and who will be there to help you answer questions and keep the conversation flowing. Suzanne? Thank you for joining us for today's presentation. We're so excited that you are with us today, and we look forward to um, going through the material and answering any questions you have a little bit later during the presentation. Um, before we get started, I do want to talk about um, submitting your questions to the presenter at any time using the Q&A feature. Um, you can share tips, resources, and ideas with other attendees using the chat feature, and that the phone line will be open later in the presentation for questions and answers. Um, please note that this event is being recorded, um, and it will be available in um, weeks on the VISTA campus. And um, we look forward to hearing your questions later on the presentation. Then. So today we're going to look at first, you know, what's your VAD, what's in it, um, and how do you get the skills and knowledge that you need to be successful during your VISTA year. Um, to do that, we'll be looking at creating an individual development plan that will help you identify um, areas you want to build expertise in during your VISTA year and how to uh, use resources so that you can build that knowledge. We'll begin a tour of the VISTA campus and looking at some of the resources there. We'll talk about, we'll have a brief um, segment where we'll talk about the way VISTAs have used the campus during their service year. And we'll end with the VISTA Top 10, uh, which will be kind of your top 10 um, things that you should be doing during your kind of first three months to help you set up for success during your entire VISTA year. And we'll end um, with some questions. So as you have questions about life as a VISTA, the work, or how to connect with the VISTA program, and it will be a perfect opportunity for you to ask those. And of course, as Susan said, if you have questions throughout the presentation, just ask them in the Q&A and we can address them. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Andy King. All right, Robin, and thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I'm gonna start by talking about um, what's in your VAD. Responsibilities as a VISTA, as you know, are outlined in what's called a VISTA assignment description or a VAD. Um, back at PSO, whether it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, you have a couple of opportunities to look at your VAD in some detail and to understand what's in it and to think about what it is it's going to take for you to accomplish those outcomes. I've had a chance at PSO to start identifying some of the knowledge and skills that you're going to need in order to be effective in your role. Whether it includes fundraising or volunteer recruitment, whether it's community engagement, or event management, it's that you're going to be asked to do things that you haven't done before. Um, so you're going to need a plan for learning how to do those things. So by reflecting back a little bit to um, what's in your VAD. So um, if, you, if you can remember back uh, to that, that session that you, um, uh, where you spent time looking at your VAD at PSO, uh, you looked at some of the specific objectives uh, that are outlined for you to accomplish during your VISTA year. And each one of those objectives, there were some specific activities that have already been identified. Um, so you and your supervisor, as you um, uh, see on this week and in the coming weeks to review um, your, your on-site orientation and training, and then also to, to look at what you're going to be doing, you're going to come up with some additional activities that are going to support the accomplishment um, of those objectives, um, and that will really capitalize on the unique strengths that you bring. Um, just because each uh, each individual VISTA member is different, you bring your own strengths, and we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to put those to best use. 
So your ad may evolve a little bit in the coming weeks. Um, but as I said, you, uh, at PSO, you started uh, to apply some of the knowledge and skills that you'll need to succeed, and you start capturing those on the individual development plan. If you have that handy, if you have the, the, your workbook from, from PSO, you might want to pull that out now. Um, if you don't have one handy, we provided you with a blank uh, copy when we sent out the, the meeting notice and the reminder. Um, our idea behind that is that you can um, flush that out uh, more fully in electronic format than you could you know, uh, jump notes in the workbook. So that's why we give it to you electronically. How does that uh, individual development plan um, actually help you? Well, uh, we've kind of outlined here on the slide a few things that, uh, that you can do to get started on that path. Um, so first is to reflect on those learning goals, what the knowledge and what are the skills that you're going to need to be successful. Um, and. Uh, you can see uh, the top of the chart on the left that uh, here's an example of where you, um, you might uh, outline for you that you are to contribute to the development of fundraising campaigns, events, and public initiatives. And after unpacking that a little bit, you understand that you need to learn about fundraising, you need to broaden uh, your understanding of communications, and you need volunteer management skills. So those are some of the um, learning goals that you're going to have, that those, in those particular three areas you're going to need to, um, uh, to help your, your skills and knowledge. So the next step is to identify some of the professional development resources that are available that can help you learn things. Um, so in the example here on the left, uh, the Vista Campus, of course, is a great place to start. Uh, also, a website uh, we'll talk about a little bit, the National Service Knowledge Network, um, a non um, nonprofit organization called Volunteer Match. They have webinars and uh, other learning resources on their website. Um, for phrasing, uh, you might set up a, a meeting over coffee with the development director at your sponsoring organization and understand what strategies are around fundraising and how you can um, dovetail into what's already happening there at the organization. Um, as another example, you might look at United Way as a source of uh, classroom-based training. Uh, so if you identify some of the resources, then you're going to outline a plan. You can't do everything at once, so um, you'll need to make some some time your schedule each week or you know every other week um, to these courses to to go online to do that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, so that's uh, a quick look at how you can use the uh, individual development plan um, to start setting out a, uh, a plan for learning throughout the year. I do for a second and just mention, if you didn't notice, um, the right-hand bottom column is a poll. We Early when we started the session, we opened a poll, but it turns out it was the wrong one. So we just have a few questions here. Um, us a chance when we start looking at specific resources to know what it is you're interested in. So if you could answer those three questions, um, we've got about um, a few minutes. Maybe maybe it's done. So um, anyway, I'll go ahead and, and move on. We're going to talk about um, your Vista year and some of the resources available to you on the campus. So you've all been to the campus. Um, you had to do some of your uh, Relearning uh, before you went to PSO, courses like civil rights and responsibilities, terms, conditions, and benefits, education award, um, but you not have had a chance to look much beyond that. So we want to make sure you understand the structure, and then some of the resources that are available there. So we'll be looking um, first framework and then individual uh, resources. So the area for vistas um, is divided into three main sections. One is Life as a Vista, the other one is called The Work, the third one is Connect or Connect with Vistas. Um, this is designed to support a different dimension of uh, your Vista experience, your Vista service. Some of it's 
more criminals, some of it's more professional. But we know that if we don't address all of those, that uh, your um, experience won't be as fulfilling and you may not be able to focus on, on getting things done. Take a look now at the first one, uh, first area, which is life as a vista. So, action um, outlines uh, on the campus things related to your personal uh, life, your uh, things like living allowance that you receive, um, some of the benefits you receive as a vista member, um, where to help, help. Uh, some of the uh, the information about just managing your um, uh, your life and understanding what the life cycle of a VISTA member typically is. So we're going to now um, leave the show, and I'm going to share my desktop in just a second. You'll see the VISTA campus come up. So when, when you start on the campus and you click the section for VISTAs, you land here. Again, you can see the three sections that I mentioned talk about life as a VISTA. I've already been to starting VISTA section, which is right here at the top. That's where you took all those um, pre-PSO courses. And then I do uh, want to point out um, on, uh, in a couple of places how you navigate. So we've got this um, navigation bar on the left here that shows shows all the different sections. And then in the main area of the page, uh, we have them represented graphically with a little mouse over so you get a little bit more detail about what's in each section. Front and right at the foundation, in the center bottom cubicle of this little um, of this bookshelf, is finding help. Um, if you're not sure where to get an answer, um, if you have a question about um, benefit or anything, uh, finding help section is the place to go. There are a couple other ways to get to it, of course, in that navigation bar. And it's number one on our quick links list, which uh, is up on every page. So even if you're not in this section, you should see the finding help um, pretty much all time. Get into finding help, um, you'll see things like the board. Again, this is one of the things that you looked at before you came to PSO. And you know that each one of these flyers has a lot of great information, um, a range of topics from student loans to your health care, child care, um, uh, finding a place to live, all of that stuff. One thing I haven't probably talked with you much about yet is the VISTA member handbook. And this is an e-book here that's on the VISTA campus, four chapters plus an appendix, and um, this has all of the, um, the rules, the regulations, the guidelines, the expectations of you as a VISTA member. Uh, it talks also about uh, the support that's available to you, uh, benefits. So you can see here the chapters down the left-hand side. Um, talk training, financial support, education, travel, health care, um, and things like even close of service and, and um, some of the special terms and conditions that apply in different types of, uh, of VISTA projects. The member handbook is probably one of the first places that you'll go if you have a question about, you know, am I through this, am I allowed to do that, or who do I contact around something, um, the member handbook. You'll notice that on most pages on the left, you'll see a link to uh, the member handbook. Uh, the handbook is a link to the health benefits plan, which is um, administered by Seven Corners. So you heard a little bit about this at PSO, and again, we just want to make sure that you know how to access information about that. Um, so here's the website for the AmeriCorps health benefit plan, and then want to get the actual um, man you can download the PDF right here on the left, the member health care guide. Um, also the um, doctor networks, the directory of pharmacies, that stuff is right here on that page. So you find that in the Find Help section. There are uh, more resources here um, about the MyR Core portal, uh, the National Service hotline, and as I mentioned earlier, the National Service 
knowledge network. So this is broader than just VISTA. It applies to all the national service programs, uh, AmeriCorps State National, um, AmeriCorps NCCC, uh, the Senior Corps. So it's designed as an online learning center for all types of national service programs. So the resources are much broader, but many of them do apply to VISTA. And so you can um, do a uh, specific search here at the top. You can for particular types of resources like an online course or uh, libraries, their discussion groups, um, uh, communities of practice that convene through here, or you browse by topic. So lots of different ways to find um, information about uh, national service in general and uh, outside of the Vista campus. All right, I'm going to um, neck up a little bit. Use some of the other things that are here in Life as a Vista. So there's background about Vista history and mission, um, the information about living on the living allowance. Um, we know when Vistas are first getting started, it would be a big adjustment um, to, uh, to budget and, and such. So. We have a flash-based course here called Living on the Living Allowance, and um, you get an opportunity to, to understand some of the strategies uh, for getting by on the Living Allowance and um, plug you into some resources that you might not know about. So that course is available here. Um, here under, and you looked at this at PSO, if you want to know when pay dates are coming up, uh, you can find that here. And we also have uh, um, a, a video on uh, of a it's actually a recorded webinar session like the one we're on now uh, called "Making It Work: Living on the Living Allowance." So, um, lots of resources there related to um, buy and, and taking care of the financial side of things. And um, just here, I think. Because that's what I wanted to um, to hide here. So let's pause for a second and see what questions have come in um, over the Q and A, if there are any so far. Thank you. We'll now begin a question and answer session. To ask a question, press star one on your touchtone phone. Record your name clearly when prompted. Hey, Welcome. Katie. Hi, Katie. This is Suzanne. Thank you for those instructions. However, we're actually going to um, utilize the Q and A section through WebEx. And um, we're going to ask Shannon to let us know um, what questions have come through there. So we're not going to take questions online right now, but we will later on in the presentation. Oh, I'm so sorry. My apologies. No, it's, it's a confusing thing we have going on over here. So thank you. And Shannon, any questions? Hi, Suzanne. No, no questions at this time. Okay. Um, well, I'm sure that there will be some questions that come up later on, so we'll continue with the presentation. Great. Thank you, uh, Suzanne and Shannon. And, and I should mention, too, that if uh, you're not familiar with the WebEx tool, since I'm sharing my desktop, the chat uh, and Q&A boxes in the right-hand side have disappeared. At the top of the screen, you'll notice uh, a little green uh, tab, uh, and it might say Andy King's desktop or something like that. Um, if you move your cursor up there, a little tray will drop down, and you'll see um, uh, you'll see different uh, option, and then all the way to the right is a little down arrow, and if you click that, you'll see an option for the Q&A, and that's where we ask you to, uh, to submit your questions. All right, back here we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the next section, um, which is really the foundation of the campus, and it's called the work. So obviously this refers to those um, resources that relate to your life um, or, or the, the work you're doing as a VISTA member. And, um, and here on the campus, we have nine major categories of content. Uh, so you can see them here. Some of the most commonly used ones, particularly uh, as VISTA members are getting started, are, um, are on the top, working with volunteers, and communications and marketing. Um, so those three areas are one that uh, we highlight so that you know that they're available. 
uh, the working with volunteers area, and the content is further divided into four areas, planning, recruiting, managing, and the fourth area talks about an online course we offer um, in which you can earn college credit on volunteer mobilization. Um, click into the recruit area. So you can see there's a long list of resources here, um, everything from civic engagement and students um, and under, uh, approaching unfamiliar communities to do recruitment. So lots of different types of resources that you can use they all relate back to um, managing a volunteer program. Section we have, uh, in fact, some new uh, some new tools we are introducing here, um, and then four different areas we've divided it up into raising funds from individuals, uh, grant proposal writing, event planning, and then again we have an online course for college credit. Um, so let's see here the the grants and proposals because many Vista members um, are asked to do that. So we have a relatively new course here on research and grants. And um, first an overview and walks you through what that process looks like and points you to some very specific resources, um, many of them online, where you can go to, um, to conduct your, your grants research, find out what ki kinds of grants are available, um, what the um, requirements are, the um, submit deadlines, all that that sort of information you can find. So, um, so you can see some examples of what what included in this course. And next section, we've got a bunch of other things. Here's one building your case for support. Proposals that work. So this is actually writing the grant proposal, and then a second one on on the on writing that goes into it. So you can drill them pretty deep. Um, and in these courses are relatively short but you do need to schedule some time to make these things actually get done. Um, we encourage you to set aside, you know, an hour a week. And uh, in your individual development plan, as you're jotting these things down, just put a date next to each one and then go into your Outlook calendar and, and just schedule an hour um, during the week when you can go actually um, uh, through some of these courses. And so you can see there's uh, many other areas um, that uh, you can explore here in the uh, in the work section. Um, other uh, ones that I want to point out here are related to poverty in America. Um, so Bill on did at PSO a course here called um, Poverty in Your Community: Developing a Community Profile. So an interactive course and it um, gives you a template that you can use um, to plan first how you would research the poverty statistics in your own city, town, community, um, county, uh, and then uh, how to build a profile from that. And then this course here helps stand how um, the data that you find stack up against national data. So this takes a long view. Um, and it looks at uh, poverty data since the 1960s when these types of statistics have uh, first been collected. So they're um, very current um, and, and uh, very interesting. We also have a series of three recorded conversations with um, one country's um, well-known poverty researcher, Stephen Pimper. Um, he's written a book and many articles about poverty, and in fact, next month, he's going to be doing a webinar um, called Alternative Lenses, and we're going to plug that at the end of the session. Um, if you want to see what he's done for VISTA before, uh, the last year, he's, he's done three sessions for us, and, and we've got them uh, here in a um, recorded session, what we call a, a webinar demand. So you can um, you can just view the, these, these videos and um, Sort of got up to speed on what's going on with uh, with poverty. Back now, just to the main uh, Vista page here, and point out another resource that we haven't yet looked at. Um, uh, 
So on the left here, you see the calendar of VISTA events. So the things that are listed here um, uh, are all, uh, um, types of events that apply to pretty much any VISTA. So beginning of February, we had a webinar that we call Social Media Monday. This one was on Flickr. Um, use photos to share your story of service. Um, mouse off, it won't go away. Um, and as I mentioned next, uh, I didn't mention this one. Next Wednesday, um, on February 20th, we have a webinar coming up um, on Vista performance measures, uh, benchmarks for awesomeness. So, how do you measure all the great things that you're doing? And what is Vista doing, Vista, the overall program, to collect that information uh, to tell the story? Um, so, that's just coming up next week. Right the calendar. Um, is a link for ongoing learning. Uh, section here, you'll find um, a session for what we used to call campus tours. That's the session that we're in right now on planning your professional development. Um, we have a section, a section here for uh, our monthly webinars. And you'll see we've got on the left the coming uh, schedule. So these are some of the ones that I've talked about. Um, as we get uh, in the approaching each one, the registration links go up so that you can register just like you did today. And then on the hand section here, um, we have our social media webinars. Um, they're on a page of their own. And then our recordings are here. So if you want to watch one on demand, um, you can see we've got, I don't know, six, eight or ten of them already in there. So uh, the list gets longer each month. Um, so just that out again. Um, it's uh, from the main VISTA page. It's right under the calendar called Ongoing Learning. Um, for the work, and the third section here is um, Connect with VISTAs. And I guess this has some of our interactive features, and, and this is where our social media um, comes in. <clears throat> So it's, um, it's a page that's packed with a lot of stuff going on. So this is really the communication center for the VISTA campus. Uh, left is announcements and alerts. These are things that come from VISTA headquarters. They're not that frequent. Maybe once a month we'll send something out that we think is important enough that we want every VISTA to see. Um, so like um, back in January in conjunction with MLK Day, there was the annual uh, of the homeless. It's called the National point in time count of the homeless. And um, so we had information about that and how VISTA projects could um, pair up with it. Uh, top right uh, are the VISTA forums. So these are the conversation areas. These are the discussion forums. And we've got um, a dozen different ones. There's one called the V Cafe, which is just kind of like open topic um, that you uh, have can um, there in the, VISTA ca the V Cafe. I've got one on saving money, so recipes, housing, and the dollar store. Uh, for new VISTAs, it's called From Lost to Found, focused on the work. Story, which is really more the inspirational thing where uh, VISTA, can, VISTA members can talk about what VISTA means to them, uh, what their experience has taught them, the kinds of things that they've seen and done and learned. And typically these are expressed in pretty creative ways through Instagram photos, a Flickr, um, uh, Pinterest boards, uh, videos. We've got a ton of stuff on our YouTube channel. Um, so, uh, so stories of V. If you have a day where you're like, why am I doing this? What is this all about? What does it mean? Am I making a difference? Uh, click here, and uh, so you'll see in the forum some conversation and discussion. But then you can also um, down below in our V4 campaign, um, you can get some more of the uh, creative stuff. And then with your job board, because we know that uh, your VISTA is finite and you're going to be looking for opportunities once you finish. And so that's a resource available for you as well. And just below those two uh, widgets is the VISTA map. And um, VISTA map is one of the coolest things that we've got here on the campus. It allows you to find other VISTA members um, using any different number of criteria. So you could 
say Zoom way in, and for people who are in your neighborhood, oh, I zoomed right into mountain range where nobody lives. Um, so in Omaha, Nebraska, and as we go closer and closer, we start the individual pins. I'm clicking. You can see Robert Moore in Omaha. He's serving this year, uh, from last year into this year at the Neighborhood Center. You can visit the, his organization's website. He posted a picture of himself there and his profile. Um, and if I click here, I could send him a message through the campus. It won't tell me his email address, but, I, but through the campus I can send him an individual message. <clears throat> um, we want everybody to appear here on the map. Um, if you have any privacy concerns, there's a button, uh, a checkbox actually in the, um, the profile where you can click it so that you don't appear on the map. A pin will still be there representing you. It just won't indicate your name. But it will show the organization where you're serving and when you're going to be there. It just won't um, reveal your name or your photo. Um, so uh, shows Vista members, Vista leaders, Vista alumni, uh, and resources, and you can. We've pre-populated the map with a number of resources, but you can, uh, if you find something that's poverty-related in your area, um, post it there, and other Vista members will be able to find it. Online, <clears throat> and uh, we're doing a, a process right now of trying to recruit. Uh, to alumni to come to the campus, create accounts, and put drop a pin on the map to just where they served and when, and then tell us where they are now so that um, this uh, alumni can find each other. But currently serving this, the members can find alumni. So um, this little uh, slide bar here allows you to go back in time. Let me it works better if I zoom out. And sort of go back to any point in time and where VISTAs were serving that particular time. So we go back to 2005, and numbers change, and now they've gone from being active VISTAs to being, you know, to showing where the people now alumni were, um, and numbers sort of shift uh, over time. So it's kind of a cool thing. It's also animated. You can have it. Uh, it won't show well on the WebEx, but if you click the play animation button, it'll year by year how the numbers um, and distribution of vistas change. You can also search down here. So if you want to say, I want to find uh, Vista members who are working on technology, and I don't care when they served, um, and just do a search. And you can see here you got a listing of them. Um, my name, and it shows you again a snapshot of where and where they're serving. Um, so then appears on the map. So you can see the distribution of technology related VIST members um, who've pinned themselves on the map. You can see where they are. Um, that is the map. Here. Again, your profile is complete because if your profile isn't, then the map won't really work. And um, in a great way for for vistas to find other people that are doing something similar to them. <clears throat> so then, just a few other things here on the Connect page. Um, if you're interested in getting uh, groups of vistas uh, uh, or vista leaders or, or others together, you can use a site called Meetup to um, to your event and post it and let other people know about it. Um, as I mentioned, we have this V is for campaign. That's kind of the inspirational piece, and uh, um, you can uh, submit um, a story, a video, a photo, um, uh, an Instagram, any kind of creative stuff that you can develop. Uh, submit it, and we select them, and you can um, as prize for doing that use social media in a variety of ways. You can find connections to our, our Facebook pages and, and uh, Twitter feed, our YouTube channel, and our Flickr account um, all right there. Uh, so that is, I think, it for the, um, um, the Connect with Vistas section. 
Um, I do want to mention here one other option. If you have looked through the campus and you saw something at one time, but now you don't know where it is, you can use the campus catalog, which is essentially the site index, um, to either find something um, by the index or, or do a search. You can find those resources that you need. So let me pause here and, and ask um, Shannon if we have any questions that have come in over the Q&A. Actually, do Andy? Yes. Uh, this one is from um, uh, Kristen and Carolina are asking similar questions. Um, they are uh, looking to recruit volunteers. They've been asked to help to recruit volunteers um, and get them to uh, prioritize the projects that they're working. I guess there's two questions. Um, so there's the first one. Um, you know, how how, how can uh, you recruit volunteers? Um, with organization to prioritize the projects that uh, Avista is working on, uh, if the volunteers that are currently working uh, that organization are already stretched pretty thin, are there thoughts and suggestions um, to help do that? So I hear a couple things in there. One is that the the sponsoring organization has existing community volunteers, but that they're doing a lot and maybe too much. Seems like now that the VISTA is going to be introducing new activities, and we'll need volunteer involvement with that as, as well. Does it sound like that right from what you're seeing? Yes. Okay. So, um, obviously, I think a, a recruitment campaign would make sense. Um, and you can think about it in a couple of different ways, both internal and external recruitment. So, you may want to recruit from the volunteers that are already connected connected with the organization because they might jump at the chance to do something new. Um, and uh, and then the, uh, it would be obviously an external campaign to bring in new members of the community to support the organization. Here um, in the working with volunteers section, there is this uh, area on recruiting. So there are um, a few resources here. I um, also want to point you to the planning section because within here is um, Center Mobilization and Program Development Course. A pretty extensive piece about planning and implementing a volunteer program. Uh, and there's a whole section in here on recruiting. And then there are um, different resources that you might look at here. So that's what's on the campus. We'll have um, you all back on the ongoing learning area. Sessions. So then here on recognition, um, which is not really recruitment, but uh, does relate to the volunteers. And we'll be adding some new um, volunteer uh, re management related sessions in the coming months. Look okay, out for those. And um, one other piece I was going to say, oh, so then looking beyond the campus, there are a couple of places particularly around volunteer recruitment. Um, one is Volunteer Match, volunteermatch.org. Other is Idealist, idealist.org. Um, both of them have um, well developed uh, resources available for volunteer program managers who are looking um, to uh, develop their skill in any particular area. So they have these free self-directed, you know, learn materials that are available there. Um, the volunteer match uh, offers webinars that will give you an overview. Um, and one of the things, of course, they're an online volunteer matching service. Um, so it's a you know a fee based thing. So the uh, sales element to some of their presentations um, and focused on, on online recruitment. So using uh, using the web to uh, to reach out and, and get people to sign on to your organization. And the strategy may work um, for some of the, for the volunteers you're looking to recruit, but um, but in mind that online recruitment that you a certain type of 
person is likely to be online, is likely to see your notice, is likely to respond to that type of invitation. So you'll probably need more than one strategy um, to diversify beyond online recruitment. Um, but billlist.org has a number of, of really great, um, great resources that are available for free. Uh, and it looks like there's another um, question in uh, the chat from Moira. Um, Robin, you can you see that uh, question? I can't seem to see it. Um, we're retrieving that question in a moment. Uh, could the other question we had, um, Andy, is um, the Vista blend courses? Do you know um, when the next courses will be available? Next courses, uh, well, there the currently are two courses um, offer uh, on fundraising and development and um, the, the volunteer mobilization. So the, the funding and, and, and grant writing one has already started, and that one will go through um, the end of March. Fundraising, I mean, the volunteer mobilization one is just about to start, and it will go through um, the middle of May. So. We won't offer these again until after those finish. It'll be sometime in the summer. Um, and and courses um, are uh, part of the blended learning uh, l learning opportunity. They build on the learning that you started at PSO. So that the PSO was the face-to-face -face part of it, um, and the rest of it is done online remotely. But there are a lot of self-guided and um, call asynchronous elements to it. You can study whenever you want at your own schedule. But then there are some synchronous pieces. There are some webinars. Sometimes when the, the class comes together, you get to meet your facilitator, um, you know, some new lecture kinds of things. Um, it take a significant amount of time. So, you know, anywhere from maybe for six hours a week. Uh, you know, think about if you were taking an evening course in college, you'd have readings to do and assignments and uh, that kind of stuff. So we um, we ask that Vista members not try to do this right away, right when they're just getting settled into their Vista role and understanding that. Uh, but after a few months, um, then we we think it's a lot easier for Vista members to participate because they they sort of have the the Vista service piece under their belt that's going smoothly. They have some additional capacity to do the the blended courses. So anyway, it's a long way of answering, but uh, summer is when the next round will be to case open. Andy, uh, one of the questions, uh, sort of the follow-up to that question, uh, is there any way, uh, given that the registration for the course that starts on the 25th has closed at the point, um, do they have to or accept any late application or registration? Um, they don't because it's a pretty competitive process. Um, we, we've done way more um, applications than we can actually um, update in the course. So we um, have a, a vetting process and, and, and the pool is narrowed down. But then in the, we still have more people than there's a lottery to, to determine who actually can get in. We've added more seats and, and we've more than doubled the size of the class that we're able to do. We've added sections, additional facilitators, but um, at the point, uh, we won't be taking any more applications for volunteer mobilization, unfortunately. Um, additional questions. Uh, do you anticipate that uh, there will be any courses that are offered in Spanish? But we do have um, this session that we're on now we offer in Spanish, but these other courses, um, probably not. If, um, if somebody has a you know, particular need, we can help research other courses and materials that are available in other languages. Um, and you currently um, send questions to us here. And that email address is vistawebinars at cns.gov. And we'll show that at the end of the session 
as well. Um, great. Uh, this question comes from Caroline. Uh, she's wondering if it's okay to do things that are listed in the VAD uh, plus more, so to go up and beyond. It is. Uh, certainly, we want to make sure that obviously your VAD is being um, accomplished. Um, and if you find that that doesn't take all of your time, um, certainly, and we encourage you to do this in conjunction with your supervisor so that they, you know, understand what your plan is and, and, and can help and support you in that. Um, certainly, we do, um, we do encourage VISTAs to, to see what else needs to be done because the change and um, and sometimes when VADs were first written, to be at the start of a three-year project, uh, there was one um, you know, plan, and then maybe the first year of VISTA uh, think together more quickly than anticipated. So then year two, that frees up some time for that VISTA um, to do some additional things. Great. Uh, so I think I've got a couple of other questions, but uh, we'll pause right now. Uh, we will make sure that all questions are answered. Uh, we're going to continue on with the rest of, of our presentation. So don't worry, we'll answer your questions, um, but we're just going to take a slight pause in that, uh, and we will get to them. So thank you. Keep them as you, as you have them. Um, <clears throat> we're going to stop looking Stop looking at uh, the campus itself, and now we're going to move ahead. And I'm going to um, introduce you back to um, to Robin Stegman, who not only is now working with us here at Vista um, through her role at Campaign Consultation, but she also served as a Vista member. She's going to talk a little bit about um, her experience and and how uh, professional development fit into her uh, overall Vista year. Thank you, Andy. Um, I'm I'm just going to briefly uh, give you kind of my personal story, but to give you examples of ways that you can um, use the VISTA campus during the year. I noticed that there were a, a lot of questions about volunteer management, um, and that's particularly for me one of the ways that the VISTA campus was um, exceedingly helpful, which is that um, when I entered, I was tasked to um, recruit volunteers to basically take over a bunch of programs um, that had been started and were kind of failing. So uh, the volunteer resource, uh, volunteer utilization resources on the campus were really great. And one in particular I'm going to um, just quickly share my desktop to show um, one of these great resources, which is um, there's a great resource on the campus called Volunteer Champions. And the thing as a VISTA is that oftentimes we're doing 100 different things. And so if we try to do everything by ourselves, um, <laughs> we can get burnt out really quickly. Um, so I found this resource on um, using your champions particularly great um, and uh, utilizing volunteers as project leaders because uh, what it allowed me to do was I uh, used the volunteer resources on the VISTA campus to basically create a training program that would train volunteers who were particularly devoted to the project to go out and recruit other volunteers. Um, so it wasn't just me who was out there in the community telling the story of my organization and why you should come work for us, um, but I had this kind of army of people who were doing the same thing. There's other, I know um, somebody was talking about how you get to prioritize your project, how do you talk to volunteers in a way that they're like, oh, I want to do that. And um, in the recruiting section, there's um, actually some great um, great volunteer in this mobilization, they actually have some great tips for how you um, craft a message that shows volunteers that it not only benefits them, but it benefits other people. And also understanding volunteer mo uh, motivations, which was really helpful to me, which is that, you know, volunteers uh, come for different reasons. So for me, I'm an achievement-oriented volunteer. Um, you give me a task, and I want to uh, complete that task, and like I get a lot of pride out of saying like I built this website, or um, you know I completed this uh, program, or I helped build this house. But other people are affiliation motivated volunteers; they want to uh, volunteer to you know meet new people. Um, and some people are um, want to do it because it gives them kind of prominence in the community, and uh, they get to kind of have some control over how their community changes. So um, I just to kind of emphasize how you can use your professional development, really taking some time to 
look through the resources can really help you better understand the community. And had I not used the Vista campus, um, you know, sometimes you can just, uh, I wouldn't have, you know, seen new ideas around um, how you craft messages or how you use your volunteer champions. So just to reinforce that, you know, as you're going through your Vista, yes, you have tons of work to do in the community, but sometimes taking even an hour to explore different resources and best practices can help you do it more effectively um, and really help to um, kind of take some load off of you um, because you're not, you know, spending all this time by yourself. Um, Another thing is that, you know, these webinars that we're doing is a great time to connect with other VISTAs. And so, you know, Andy pointed out the forms. Um, you know, sometimes it's really good to see what other VISTAs are doing and to get those examples. So I really encourage you not only to use the forms, but to hop on some of these webinars, especially on things that interest you, because there's always a chat going on. There's um, always a Q&A. And so you can ask for other examples of ways that they have um, – you know, done similar things like fundraising or volunteer management. So I'm going to pass this back over to Andy, and we're going to talk about the VISTA Top 10. Great doing that, Robin. And um, we just quickly give you um, some Top 10 suggestions for uh, ways that you can um, continue your, uh, your learning and to maximize your VISTA service. So first up is number one, know your benefits. We talked about some of this at PSO, but there's a lot to understand. Um, use the resource board if there are things that you can't uh, figure out or you don't find the answer. Um, or in the handbook, call your office uh, because they can be a great resource for you. Number budget on the living allowance. This is always the um, a real tough thing to do um, because you're on limited resources. That's why taking the living on the living allowance course that Andy pointed out is particularly important because it will give you tips on how to live cheaply. But also, you know, ask Vistas and other people in your community for um, tips and connections. When I entered a Vista, there was a shopkeeper who used to give me a discount on groceries because he was also an AmeriCorps. Um, he was also an AmeriCorps member. So trying to get some, you know, tips. Um, on resources that you can do that will help you kind of get through your year. Um, and then also have a Living on a Living Allowance webinar, which can give you additional tips. D, know the need that you're trying to address. Um, so first of all, understand the big picture is, so learn about poverty in America through um, those resources I pointed out that are on the campus. And next month we've got a webinar on the topic. But you also want to look local. Um, and we have some courses to help you do that, and probably your sponsoring organization will have some research and understanding. Um, but also other community leaders out there will be talking about, will be looking at, will be understanding what needs are and how they're changing over time. And so you may want to reach out to them um, by scheduling meetings, um, setting up phone calls or, or uh, webinars or, or conference calls, um, and staying plugged in to others in the community who are working on the same thing. Now, get to know your organization. So, you know, there are several things you can do to help, you know, get to know. One is just to set regular meetings with your supervisor who can help you um, move in. But also, you know, take a look at what documents are steering your organization. I know when I was at Vista, I had the mission statement up in my office where I could see it because that was what really defined the work we did. So take a look to see if there's a strategic plan, if there's a mission statement that helps um, guide the work you're doing and how you fit in with that. Um, you know, meet with people in various departments to see about their role and how you can help each other out. Um, and you know, also ask to see if you can attend a board meeting um, or look at recent you know, uh, minutes from board meetings. And then, of course, um, quarterly reports that other VISTAs have done, if you're at a site where you're a second or third VISTA, can really help you see what VISTAs before you have done um, in the community. And number five is kind of an extension of Number three, this is dive into the community. So once you've done research and you understand um, what the needs are, then you want to really get involved with your stakeholders. You know, is it who stands to benefit um, from the work that you're doing and, and who maybe could be a potential partner, supporter, um, who could help you out? So, um, so set up stakeholder meetings, go to networking events, 
um, to others at your organization, your supervisor and coworkers, to find out about, um, other places where you could plug in in the community. Uh, and then look for some of the, the more social and, and fun things because those also give you insights into what's happening in the community. So festivals, meetings, um, you know, uh, school often doing, um, you know, plays and, and other activities that give you insights into what's happening there. And look out for potential partners as well. Number six, so uh, numbers three, four, and five really kind of are the points that will launch you into number six. So once you've done your research in the community and you kind of know the need and know what your organization is, then it's time to take a look and turn your VAD into action. So one of the easiest things you can do is just have your VAD somewhere in your office where you can easily find it. Um, and work with your, and then you know your next step is work with your supervisors to figure out what the goals and objectives are for your year, um, and you know research if there are terms or activities like how do you do volunteer management, um, do some research around how you can complete your event, and then use all of that um, to create a project plan that really outlines what you're going to do um, from here on, on out. Revan is also about planning, and this is take time to grow. So it's focusing on. on your own professional development, so, so that individual development plan template uh, for webinars, attend the webinars, um, and make them each week uh, do some kind of learning, whether it's on the campus or anywhere else or, or even just researching, but don't leave it up to chance. Make a plan and put a calendar. Number eight, document your success. So as you're planning and implementing your VAD, make sure that you're taking time to track your successes. This is not only important for your quarterly report, but it helps at the end of the year if you have this list of everything you've done. Um, it's a great thing to use as you're crafting your resume or talking about VISTA or just personally to see the effect that you're having to be, during your year of service. Make sure you're creating a system to record your work, um, and also you make sure that you're always thinking about how you not only pass this on to the next VISTA, but since VISTA's work is capacity building, how at the end of um, everything that you're doing that you're really able to pass this on to the community and it's something the community can, can uh, sustain beyond your year of service. Nice. Communicate about VISTA, tell your story, uh, create and, and practice a minute message or an elevator speech, uh, put the VISTA logo on the stuff that you're creating and make sure your business cards and your email signature uh, uh, include all of that. Um, and talk about Getting on the website of, of your organization um, and make sure that all your coworkers know you're a VISTA um, by what you have in your, your own personal workspace. So I uh, mentioned the VS4 campaign on the campus. Um, submit. Of get connected. Obviously, one of the uh, most valuable parts about the VISTA program is really being able to connect with fellow VISTAs. Um, you can do that in person um, by arranging a meetup, um, or you can do that virtually. So by following Facebook on, and VISTA on Facebook and Twitter, so you can connect with VISTAs across the country on that way. Um, by finding alumni and members in your area and across the country who are working on uh, similar things to what you are, using the VISTA map, or by asking for advice or responding to questions on the VISTA form. Uh, a quick look at our, our top 10 things to do. Um, and I just want to mention one more time, um, if you are looking for help, if you um, have questions or, or need to get some support um, the campus, uh, use the resource board that's there. Um, it has all of those quick links to get attached or, or connected to um, different organizations. If you've been through there and you can't find what you're looking for um, and your supervisor doesn't know, then the uh, state office would be the next place to go. You can also ask your peers um, by way of the, the campus forums. Um, if you have any VISTAs that you're working with there locally, um, uh, if you have a need, if you have a question, please do ask. Uh, yep. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Yep, I would say um, I know we've we've hit the top of the hour, but um, if folks are able to stay on, we're we're happy to stay here and, and see what questions you may have. So I'll turn it back to you, Suzanne. Thank you. I'm um, sorry to interrupt, uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, what we're going to do is go ahead and open the evaluation right now, um, so that anyone who needs to jump off can please do that before they do. 
um, but we will be sticking around to answer any questions. Um, we know there's several of them, and we're happy to stay as long as necessary to answer them. Um, do you want to get some questions, and the operator, um, if you don't mind giving us the um, dial-in instructions um, so that we can ask questions verbally? Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. You can give us instructions, and Shannon, we'll, uh, we'll hear from you in just a minute. All right. If you'd like to ask a question, press star 1 on your touchtone phone and record your name clearly when prompted. Your name is required to ask, introduce your question. Again, press star 1 to ask a question. Uh, so while we're waiting, we do actually have some questions in the chat and Q&A. Uh, so I'm going to start. Um, with the question uh, from um, Carolyn, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, from Christine. Um, she's looking for advice regarding elementary school education models, uh, specifically for drug, alcohol, and tobacco prevention. The uh, question is whether there are tools on the VISTA campus that can help steer her in the right direction. Uh, there are a few. Um, and in the uh, section on the work, in the bottom row of, uh, of that bookcase, you'll see um, a section, I think it's called um, areas or um, VISTA project areas. Um, and it has things like uh, um, income tax credit and disaster recovery. One of the examples in there, um, in one of the areas is around uh, reform. And um, so we're partnering with the Department of Education. It's a project called Together for Tomorrow. And it, um, so it's looking at how schools plan to, and education um, can play a role in, in helping to break the cycle of poverty. And we have seven, eight different demonstration sites around the country. They've been producing and posting resources there. We also have a link to the U.S. Department of Education website that has other related, many more related uh, resources around um, education. So uh, it's some, it may not be specific to what you're looking for, but there will be some related resources. You might also look at the um, National Institutes of Drug Abuse or, or the National Institutes of Mental Health. So some other federal agencies that have created lots of resources around um, uh, you know, uh, drug dependency and, and that sort of thing. So there may be some overlap there. Wonderful. Um, the next question comes from Latasha, uh, and she's wondering whether or not there are funds allocated from Vista to work site, um, to their sites, so that um, Vista would have T-shirts, cups, bags, or other swag. Uh, no, the short answer, but no. If um, sponsors have their own resources to make available for that, um, that's terrific. Um, and this, the members, you know, have limited personal resources, so a lot of that's out of reach. But um, but NationalServiceGear.org is the place to get them if you've got the means. Um, can you have any questions? Yes, our first question comes from Kyla Byers. Kyla, your line is open. Oh, yeah. um, <clears throat> it was a connectivity issue, and I got it figured out. So ah. that's all I had. Sorry. <laughs> glad, it, glad it worked out. Thank you. And our next question comes from Latasha Park. Latasha, your line is open. Okay, hello. Hi there. Um, I have another question. We're breaking in and Hello. out. Okay. Can we now? We can. Yes. Okay. Um, I was fundraising, and so I'm just um, wondering. I do have my own vehicle, and um, part of my role is collecting in-kind donations for the organization, meaning I send out letters and I meet with um, people in the community, business people, et cetera. And so a, a majority of my work is going to be establishing relationships, meaning the businesses are not going to come to nonprofit. I have to go out to these different businesses. So as me driving my own car and using my own mileage for that, how does that work? Because, of course, I know we, we're, we're, we're not the, the best salary, but at least we get a stipend coming in, and a stipend 
with the bid is not included the mileage or the running around that, that is part of, I think, I'm not sure, it's not my bad, but it's kind of in my head, if you get what I'm saying, as far as establishing relationships with other businesses. Sure. Yeah, and so we call service-related transportation. Um, so the, the kind you described where in order to, to carry a service, you need to be, uh, you know, traveling through the, the community, whether it's through your own car, public transit. Um, and so the way that works is um, – your sponsoring organization would need to um, verify that, in fact, it is part of your expected duties and responsibilities to either use your car, use transit for that purpose. And there's a form um, on the My AmeriCorps portal that you fill out. It's called Service uh, Transportation or Public Transit. V-81 is the name of the form. You would, uh, what's the name of the form? You said uh, dash. What? It's 81. So V like Vista. Okay. One. Yeah. So it's okay. it's form number is V81. So you would uh, fill that out on the uh, in your uh, account on My AmeriCorps, and then the supervisor would approve that and send it on. And essentially, that sets up a relationship between you and the sponsoring organization, where then there's responsible for reimbursing you for your mileage. Each station has a slightly different procedure, but typically there is some kind of log. It's a, a, a piece of paper, a database, a spreadsheet, where you're logging each trip and how many miles, the date, what the perp was. Um, and then according to the, your organization's travel policy, they reimburse you at the rate that they've established for you know, members at your organization. So it's between your and your sponsor. It's not something that the VISTA program uh, does direct reimbursement for. Um, and so can the fleet complete it retroactively or before travel or it has to be done after travel? Well, the form, the V81 form should be done at the start of your service term. So if you haven't filled one out yet, talk to your supervisor immediately about doing one. I don't know that they could. Uh, they, there'd be a way for them to reimburse you retroactively, but again, your supervisor would know the details about how they would do that. Okay. What happens if they have no policy in place? They don't reimburse any other um, staff members at the organization. Then they're required to reimburse you at the IRS rate. Okay. And this is all laid out in the terms of the uh, the VISTA memora Memorandum of Agreement that the organization signed with, with AmeriCorps for VISTA. Got it. Okay. That was perfect. You okay. answered my question. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Question of time. Oh. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. We do have some questions. Um, in the uh, Q&A, uh, this one's from Catherine. Uh, do you send out notifications for new courses um, so that people are aware of the deadlines for applications? Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll, uh, notify you in a couple ways. We'll send email notices out um, about the webinars that are coming up each month. Uh, also, when the VISTA blend courses, when those enrollment periods open, we will send uh, email notices about those. We also post announcements in that announcements uh, window on the Connect page of VISTA campus. Great. Thank you. Uh, and it looks like the last question, um, and there's a couple of them, but they're all about sort of what um, counts as work hours and whether or not um, this is directed to work sort of the traditional 9 to 5, 40 hour work week, or really if it's um, something that's a little bit non traditional and doesn't have the, as many lines. Mm. Uh, Vista, uh, Vista service is absolutely not, not a 9 to 5 job um, uh, because you know that a lot of the work that you're going to be doing is work in the community, and in order to reach community members, that might mean attending meetings in the evening or working with volunteer programs that happen after the workday. Um, Fundraising events might be done on a weekend. Um, so it's definitely not a 9-to-5 job. 
it is full-time job, full-time service opportunity. I shouldn't say job. Um, uh, it is full-time service, so whatever full-time is at your sponsoring organization, some places it's 40 a week, some places it might be 30 and a half hours a week. Uh, but generally, uh, this, this should be putting in the same number of hours that a time employee does at that organization. Um, and to set up with your supervisor what your regular hours are going to be so that, you know, people know they can reach you at the office. So you, you need to have some kind of a regular schedule. Um, but also understand that uh, a lot of things are going to happen outside the schedule. And you'll need to use the you know, flexible scheduling or, or whatever the policy is called at your site um, that allows you to balance your hours. So if you're going to work three extra hours because you're facilitating a community meeting, maybe you come in three hours late tomorrow. Uh, so you work a long day today and a shorter day tomorrow, or, or you you shift your hours later. So I'm going to work from you know noon until 8 p.m. instead of you know nine to five, something like that. Great, thank you. Um, it looks like that is. Of the questions that we have in the chat in the Q&A. Uh, did we have anything else on the line? Katie, I didn't catch. I think I feel like I thought I heard you, but I didn't actually catch you. My apologies. We are showing no more questions at this time. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, and we, we are really happy to have some great participation and chat here. Uh, we will be sending you a follow-up email with some of the questions. So you can have um, a written version of some of the questions and conversations that happened today. Um, so thank you for joining us. And um, we hope to see you soon on another VISTA webinar. Thank you. That does conclusion and answer session of today's call. You may disconnect at this time.